Although Opel nowadays isn't a brand that will pop up in your head when you think about luxury cars, it was back in the day, with the most recent full-size car being the Senator B that was made up until 1993. Other important luxury models were for example the Capitan, Admiral and Diplomat, which were made in the 1960s and 1970s. Back in the late 1920s when Opel wasn't a part of the American General Motors yet, Opel tended to make vehicles fitted within each segment, like the 4PS for the smallest segment and the 15-60PS for the upper segment with inline 6 engines in Opel's lineup in the 1920s. At the end of the 1920s, in 1928, Opel revealed its finest luxury cars made so far, the Opel Regent, or also known as the 24-110 PS. A new flagship of Opel positioned above the existing six-cylinder segments, Opel was in with the 12-50 PS and the 15-60 PS. The Opel Regent was presented at the Internationale Automobile Ausstellung or IAA in Berlin in November 1928. This was a luxury vehicle powered by a 6 liter inline 8 engine which produced 110 horsepower at 3200 rpm and 231 newton meters at 2800 rpm. The engine was said to be based on a race car engine and the car had a 3-speed manual gearbox pushing the car to be a stated top speed of 100 km an hour or even 130 km an hour with the switchable overdrive from Maybach giving the car two effective reverse gears and six forward gears for an additional 1000 German marks. Consumption wise the car was a bit less fuel efficient than the competition as the Horch used around 18 liters per 100 km the Opel Regent used around 23 liters per 100 km and 0.7 liters of oil per 100 km. While this might seem a lot in today's standard, the average fuel consumption of a car in the 1920s was between 11.8 and 16.8 liters per 100 km, which makes this seem like not a lot. The car had a weight of 2.2 tons, with the chassis alone weighing 1550 kilos, which had a wheelbase of 3.7 meters making the car 5.4 meters in length and 1.83 meters in width. The car could also be a 7-seater and there were many customization options which would make the car even heavier. Price and quality wise the Regent was revolutionary and an extremely big threat to other car makers such as the Cadillac with its Series 341 and Horch with the A-Type 350 and 375, produced in the same time period. The Opel even started to compete with brands such as Rolls-Royce and Bugatti for less than half the price. As said earlier, the Regent was introduced in November 1928 with the starting price of 14,000 German marks with a further 5 to 6 thousand German marks for body and other options that people could choose from. At this point the region could cost 10 times as much as Opel's smallest and cheapest vehicle, the 4PS, which was later the Opel Cadet. The 7 seat touring region cost 18,500 German marks. The Roadster cost 19,000 German marks and the Pullman sedan cost 20,000 marks which is equivalent to 84,800 euros in 2024. The specifications of the competition were somewhat comparable, but were mostly worse than the Opel Region specifications. The Cadillac Series 341 was powered by a 5.6 liter inline 8 that produced 90 horsepower via a 3-speed manual gearbox. And the Horch models were powered by a 4 liter inline 8 producing 80 horsepower via a 4-speed manual gearbox. These models could reach speeds up to 100 km an hour and was a bit bigger than the Regent, even though it was less powerful. The prices of the direct competition such as the Cadillac were between $3,350 and $6,700 or between $59,965 or €55,000 and €119,930 or €110,000 in 2024. Before March 1929, Opel had already produced 25 units of the Regent, which proved to be that the car was quite successful even though it had a, pu it had a huge price tag. 
the car was available as a coupe, a cabriolet, which was displayed at the launch back in November 1928 at the IAA, or as a Pullman Luxus limousine, which would have seven seats. The coupe versions were made by a coach builder named Kruk, and was the most popular model with the most remaining pictures being of the Opel Regent Kruk. Just before Black Thursday, which was in October 1929, General Motors bought about 80% of Opel shares in March 1929 for an astonishing $33.35 million, or over half a billion dollars in today's money. The main reason for this purchase was the f rising fear of the difficult competition Opel would bring up to the American car brands General Motors had, such as Buick and Cadillac. After the purchase of 80% of the shares of Opel, General Motors wanted to completely vanish the Regent, so the impact the Regent had on the American cars would be as little as possible. They did this by first stopping the production of the Regent in 1929, leading to a production span of less than a year for the Regent. After this, General Motors bought back the already purchased Regent from customers for the same price they were sold for, leading to no fleeing Regents left. After these purchases, General Motors destroyed Regents that were purchased back and also destroyed all the remaining blueprints that were left of the car, so that the slightest amount of people would know about the Opel Regent. Eventually, no Regent survived these actions. With only 25 units made up until 1929 against the 38,000 units of the Cadillac 341 series and 12,000 units of the many Watch 8 type models, the Regent never succeeded its potential success and remains mainly hidden as one of the most interesting vehicles with the most unique history ever made. The car's successor was the Opel 1.8 liter in 1931. Even though this particular model was never seen as the direct successor of the Regent because of its smaller engine and smaller dimensions, the main reason would be the name that the most luxurious version of the 1.80 liter had, as the name was Regent. Eventually, the next luxury car Opel made was the Opel Admiral in 1937, eight years after the discontinuation and disappearance of the Regent. In the next video, I will be talking about the downfall of the Opel's luxury segment, just like this video was about. Don't forget to watch that video as well and see you then.